Greetings one and all, this is Rhythm Works and welcome to my channel. Just a bit of a catch up what I've been doing, what is going on, what's on my mind. Um, yeah, I went to LA uh, last week um, for around five days doing my day job. Been back a couple of days, paid my bills and you know, do all that daily life stuff that you have to do and finally got down to some gaming. But anyway, I've got some confessions for you all today. And the first one is I'm not feeling Grand Theft Auto 5. I never thought these words would ever come out of my lips based upon the reviews that I had on the single player and the game basically in general for my last two videos on YouTube. Because as you can see, I was gushing over the prospect of playing this game. But it's nothing to do with the franchise personally. It's just the inability on Rockstar's part to deliver the online component to its fullness on the day specified. I don't mind being drip fed the stuff because it's a big title, it's a huge title. I don't mind that. I don't mind being drip fed it. But drip feed me with a full pot. Don't drip feed me with an empty pot. You know, playing the online game and millions of other people experiencing the same thing as me with lost characters and lost money and lost levels and all that kind of stuff you know it just led me to the point where every time i tried to play the game do i trust the game to fix up itself or to fail and it just ended up with me not trusting the game the physical disc of the game and Whenever I feel mistrust in a game, I just don't feel enthused about it. It's like my whole enthusiasm was just sat with the inability of, of the delivery of the online component, and that's just me. Now, millions of other people felt angry about the situation, and rightfully so at the end of the day. It's like, you know, if people want to basically go onto Rockstar's website and cuss out their clerk, they have, they have the right to do so because it's their money. You see, what pisses me off is when you have these sanctimonious people basically saying, well, I've got the same problem. Just chill the fuck out, dude, and this and that. Kiss my bamba clap, because at the end of the day, it's not your money I'm fucking spending. I'm spending my money. And if I'm spending my money on a product that I'm not getting 100% on, I'm gonna wanna know why. And if it continues where I don't get the full use or the full worth of my £49.99 or my £65 or my £119 depending on which version of Grand Theft Auto I bought I'm gonna wanna know why so you know with all these people that's trying to exercise sage and wisdom and what have you that's all well and good you might have the same problems we we all do and you might have a better way of dealing with it but what I do appreciate is if you have a balanced viewpoint on what people you know should do at the end of the day because whatever you do ain't gonna change the situation I accept that and I respect that to the max but when you got people basically trying to talk down to you in doing so that's what I don't like so kiss my ass motherfuckers <laughs> but anyway that's confession number one I'm not feeling Grand Theft Auto it's not a game that I even jump on more than so you know because if the online situation worked from day one, I wouldn't have no problem looking at another gamer seeing that he's reached level level 75 and I just reached level five. That's because he's basically been screwing the game, making love to the game from the game came out. You know what I'm saying? It's his or her prerogative at the end of the day. You know, I don't mind that, but I have a thing about achieving stuff. And with the $400,000 stimulus that Rockstar's trying to provide, it ain't helping me because you're basically trying to help me along my way in the game, which is not what I really wanted to do. That was the whole reason why I stopped playing Grand Theft Auto 4 because I was basically relying on the cheat system too much and I found that I didn't enjoy the game within that. So I stopped playing it and I was just so infused about playing Grand Theft Auto 5, you know, throughout the delays and what have you in releasing and drip fed all the stuff we was drip fed i was still enthused about it but then getting the online situation and experiencing what everybody else has been experiencing some people has, has lapped it up and you know and has enjoyed the game and 
dug deep into the game. Some people has not even had the problem that we've all had and has managed to basically level up and do what they need to do and more power to them. You know, fortune favours the brave, I suppose. But from my perspective, I'm not feeling Grand Theft Auto. I'm not feeling it at all to just jump on it every day. I'll, I'll play it, but not in the way that I played the single player, which I enjoyed immensely, I must say. Um, yeah, that's it on that score. Next on my confessions list is the fact that as you know, I'm going to be playing Battlefield 4. I've already pre-ordered that. But not only have I pre-ordered Battlefield 4, but wait for it. Drum roll. I've pre-ordered Call of Duty Ghosts as well. <laughs> Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Do not ask. And before any Call of Duty aficionados comes with any bullshit. One thing you guys got to remember, I've only played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. That's the last game I basically played. And at that point in time, I wasn't a first person shooter fan to begin with. But I want to basically try with Call of Duty what I tried with FIFA. Now with FIFA, I know that I'm absolute shite at the game. It's been a long-standing franchise that has garnered so many millions of fans all over the world. And, you know, I recognize that I'm not good at the game, but I also recognize the skill set some of these masterful beast players have got. So, you know, you got to pay respect. But with Call of Duty Ghosts, I just want to try my best within that game i'm liking battlefield 4 you know without a doubt i'm liking that you know and i've been watching different videos well in fact while i was in la i was watching um watching both pro battlefield 4 and call of duty ghost videos and stuff and i spent a lot of time watching the call of duty ghost videos and um you know what they're basically trying to do is to entice me as a newbie, new player, as it were, to get into the franchise. Now, to all the people that know the franchise inside out, upside down, inside out, what have you, you know, they will basically say, well, nothing's changed about the game. It's just Call of Duty 2.5. But at the same time, when they ask you what you basically want, it's like you guys say, well, you don't want it changed. You just want it the same way, blah, 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 blah. So they don't really change it per se. So, you know, I don't understand why everybody's bitching from that standpoint, you know what I mean? But, you know, I've looked at the videos and there's quite a few game modes. I like the offline um, squad modes. That looks pretty good, that looks pretty interesting. But remember, I'm just a, a new guy stepping onto the bus, you know what I'm saying? And um, I pre-ordered that. And also, I went into game, my local game store to pre-order Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4 on the PS3 and also to pre-order the PS4 versions um, which was kind of like a masterstroke I think on my part so that when I actually go to the store I'm not only am I guaranteed the games but I'm guaranteed the, re um, the reduction in price for the PS4 versions after trading so you know I thought it was a masterstroke personally <laughs> but um yeah so that's confession number two i have pre-ordered call of duty ghosts come the week after battlefield 4's release i'm gonna be a coddy how long who knows stay tuned for further details and next on the list is the last of us dlc um which was made available to us or to me rather many hours after its due release day and time um it was supposed to be midnight yesterday i think yeah if that makes sense but um i waited till three o'clock in the morning didn't receive jack shit so went to bed got up and yep the maps were basically there but when people in america has it from like four o'clock pacific standard time you know they're all up in that grill and getting into every nook and cranny and crevice of the maps. So going into the map, 
as an utter newbie player. Um, it was kind of disheartening, but you know, you got to be in it to win it. That's my thing. But the consensus that I've had this morning, in fact, is that it's not very exciting, really. And it's made me appreciate the standard maps that are in the game. It's made me appreciate them even more. Not only that, um, you know, I had to delete a few people from my list, um, from my Last of Us gaming list, you know, in relation that I have people basically inviting me like 9, 10, 15 fucking times to basically play um, a factions game. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody's going to invite you 15 times, that basically means they can't find nobody to basically play with. And I find that those players are the players that basically just want you to fill up the fucking numbers and for them to farm their healing missions and shit on you. Which, you know, I don't mind for a couple of games if that's their mission. But I don't like it if that's what they basically want to do throughout the whole duration. Do you know what I'm saying? And another thing I don't like as well is, that, is when people just jump into your fucking lobby and don't ask you shit. Do you know what I mean? Because you can be setting up a game with other people in your lobby, right? And just waiting for them to come in and you have people just jump in your lobby. Don't even knock the door, kick the fucking door down and don't even wipe their feet when they come into your fucking house. You know what I'm saying? Them kind of players. And you wonder why people don't want to play with your ass, right? I had to delete a guy yesterday who I forgive him for his inconsistencies in having consideration and regarding his teammate. But when he decided to basically take the piss, I just basically, I just deleted him. Didn't say nothing, just deleted him and fucking blocked him because he was selfish. He was selfish. But anyway, that's just my thing on The Last of Us at present in relation to the maps in relation to um, gameplay and the type of gameplay that I have been experiencing of late um, other than that still love the game I still love The Last of Us you know when you have a good team around you it's a fucking good game especially when you're all mic'd up and shit but when you have team members that don't that don't have a mic they can be forgiven to some degree if they follow instructions but then when you have a, a team player that has a mic that doesn't say shit only shit I've been shot someone save me doesn't make for a good game but anyway that's the last of us and that's more or less the last of um, my roundup for what's been going on so until the next time happy gaming and I'll catch you guys on the next one I'm out of here sayonara oh P.S. Yeah, I've been playing some Beyond Two Souls as well. That's some creepy shit, man. For real, man. It plays like a movie. It's like, you know, I haven't played Heavy Rain, but I've heard that it's very similar to Heavy Rain. Obviously, Quantic Dream, the makers behind that as well. But um, it's a really good game. It's, it's immersive. It's a real immersive game. Anyway, I'm out of it. Peace later.